Shear plates come in two flavors, wedged and non-wedged. In previous labs, we have used wedged shear plates to collimate light. When passing a plane wave through a non-wedged shear plate, no fringes are formed, as the OPD between the two reflected wave fronts is constant in both the horizontal and vertical directions. When the incident wave front is spherical, the reflected wave fronts appear as two separate virtual point sources with a similar fringe separation as in Young's two pinhole interferometer experiment. Wedge shear plates introduce inconsistency in the X and Y axes. An incident plane wave on a wedge shear plate creates a straight fringe pattern along the horizontal axis. This pattern is what we used in previous labs to collimate light. When the incident wave front on a wedge shear plate is spherical, the two reflected wave fronts again appear as two points. But this time, in addition to having a linear separation, there is also an angular separation. Using this general theory and a fair bit of math, this lab shows how shear plates can be used to find the focal length of lenses and mirrors and wave front radius of curvature. The objective lens that we used had an NA of 0.25 and a focal length of 16.5 millimeters. To fill the aperture of the collimation lens, we used an 800 millimeter focal length lens resulting in an expansion ratio of about 50. We mounted this lens in a simple V-wedge mount since we could not mount it in the other already occupied mounts, which didn't allow us to align the lens well as we didn't have tip and tilt. It was more important though that the beam went through the center of the lens so that the beam exiting the lens did not diverge much from the optical axis. We checked for collimation with a wedged shear plate and translated the collimation lens in Z until the fringes were parallel to the reference line. For subsequent parts of the lab, we can tell whether the beam is converging or diverging at the location of the shear plate by the orientation of the fringes, or which way they're tilted. The orientation also tells us about the wavefront, whether it's negative or positive. Our goal for this section of the lab was to measure the radius of curvature of the wavefront of the low power lens. With this knowledge, it is possible to determine the quality of the lens and to know if it meets specifications or not. Using this equation, we can determine the radius of curvature. S is the shear distance. D is the spacing between fringes. Lambda is the laser wavelength. Alpha is the fringe angle. With this, we determined that our radius of curvature for our wavefront was 87.3 meters. With the radius of curvature of the wavefront, we are able to determine the focal length of the lens with the distance of between the shear plate and the lens. We determined that the error on our focal length for our lens was about 87.75 meters, with a potential error of 9.4 meters on the radius of curvature for our wavefront. Our goal for this section was to find the radius of curvature of a low-powered mirror. For a mirror, the shear plate must be rotated 180 degrees to allow the light to pass through the re and reflect off the mirror. To measure the power, the radius of curvature in the mirror must be determined, and since our incoming light of the test lens, test mirror is collimated, the reflected wavefront must be equal to that of the mirror's radius of curvature, with an offset due to the distance from the observation screen. For both locations, the fringe distance as well as the angle changes slightly due to the focal length being so large, with the fringes oriented in the following manner. As seen in the image, the orientation of the fringes imply that the mirror being used is concave with a converging beam incident onto the screen, and the pattern implies some aberration in the mirror. Our results based on measuring the shear distance, fringe distance, as well as the angle of the fringes at the two locations result in the following for the focal length and the radius of curvature. For error, the two locations produced different results for the focal lengths. After reviewing the results, the angle should not deviate heavily with the system with an extremely high focal length. The fringes used to measure the angle from the reference line was not co consistent, and the data from the table added air in the system to be able to measure the angle. The next part of the lab was to test a high power mirror. Adjustments must be made in the setup due to having a significant lower radius of curvature. We introduced a good quality reference lens to increase the OPL of the system to allow for measurements to be done, and in doing so, the incoming collimated light will be focusing down to the mirror and reflect, now able to be measured with the shear plate. However, there are only two locations where fringes will be observed as the other locations will not produce collimated light returning into the system. As shown below, the focal point of the reference lens as well as the location where the testing mirror is at its radius of curvature are where the fringes will be produced. The difference of the two locations result in the radius of the mirror. As shown, it is 540 millimeters. A source of error for this part of the lab was locating the readings on the rail. Since the position of the surfaces varied on the post holder, the exact locations on the rail could not be determined, and attempts were made by using straight edges to find these locations. At the end of the lab, we compared using the non-wedge plate to the wedge plate. The result shows circular non-straight fringes, which are, show signs that there are aberrations in our system. We would expect to see no fringes with a perfectly collimated beam, because ideally that'd be a perfect plane wave that, when incident on the non-wedge plate, keeps the OPD between the two reflected wavefronts constant. Our major sources of error was the mount for our collimating lens, the protractor that we used for measuring our angle deviation, and the fact that we were supposed to be using an 825mm lens, not 800. 